All right, we got to talk about this G1 show from Osaka. A fantastic show. Um, I believe you said perhaps the greatest night of G1 ever. Um, I thought so. I thought it was the best G1, um, the best G1 like uh, block night I've ever seen. I thought it, it was one of the best two and a half, maybe the best two and a half hour wrestling show I've ever seen. I've seen better cards, but they're like monster four and five hour cards. I thought this card was better than the Tokyo Dome this year. Um, I thought this was absolutely phenomenal. Every match, other than Jay White and Ujiro, and Jay White and Ujiro is part of a long term story. Even that was great for what it was. Yeah, it was entertaining for its three minutes, but it's part of a long term storyline. I mean, they, they, based on what they were, you know, they weren't there to have a four star match. You know what I mean? It, it's, that's, it, that it, is it, abundantly clear. I mean, now I'm not saying that they could have, but I'm saying that they weren't. Everybody else, holy fuck. I thought that was maybe the best. It was the best Jeff Cobb match I've ever seen. It's the best Tai Chi match I've ever seen. Freaking Minoru Suzuki and Kota Ibushi was unfrickin' believable. It was scary. I do not like certain things that they did as far as dangerous goes. I think that as far as like a one take unbelievable fight, it was, uh, you know, in, uh, just incredible. I mean, the, the idea, you know, the the, the finish, like the, the finish with Suzuki knocked out from the knee and sitting there just smiling with his tongue out because he got knocked out. It, he's just incredible. I'll tell you what. Um, uh, I, 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 I did not. I, I am allowed because I haven't officially cast my Hall of Fame vote, but I am making a switch there is no fucking way that tomohiro ishii as a hall of fame candidate is behind <laughs> edge and randy orton put it that way i mean and, and i'm a big fan of edge but there is no fucking way this is the, he's so, so you know and i know look i know edge is a bigger star and i like i said i i've always voted for edge but this is just worlds different in the ring. I mean, it's like, eh, you know, it's just worlds of difference. This guy can go in there with any. He went in there with Jeff Cobb. Nothing against Jeff Cobb. And I've seen Jeff Cobb have great matches in PWG before. But he made like this was like a freaking epic match. It was incredible. I mean, and, he, and he, he's done that every night with everyone. Even Yudro had a good match with him. But all the Tai Chi had a great match with him. Um, you know, just, and it's not like it's just this G1. It's like your MVP of G1 when you got the greatest workers in the world all together year after year for the last, how many years has G1 been the highlight in ring of, of the year as is, as it is right now. And you got freaking Kota Ibushi and Kenny Omega and Okada and Tanahashi were some of the greatest workers this business has ever seen. And he, is up not not just with him he he some years has been the best guy and every year he's one of the best guys and you know he does that every time he's called on in a singles match this guy is you know i i i i think that it you know i mean it's, it's funny because um actually somebody wrote me a letter essentially saying that um after we did the hall of fame show and i was like you know when you think about like Edge, Randy Orton, and Ishii, and you think about who's had the best matches, it isn't close. As good as Edge is, and even close. I mean, Ishii's 50th best match is probably better than all but maybe two Randy Orton matches of his entire life. Maybe his 100th best match is probably better than all but two Randy Orton matches of his life. I mean, it's just such a difference. Um, and, you know, that's, that's the deal. So, yeah. Um, and then we didn't even talk about freaking Okada and Shingo Takagi. Well, let's Shingo start at the opener. We'll talk about all of them. Okay. Well, the opener was um, the opener was great. It was um, Yoda Suji and Yuya Urimura, and they had the crowd was really hot, and I think that they may have had their best match so far. Um, it's if if not, it was close. Um, you know the Yuda Su Suji. He's got, got this great drop kick. Uh, Uimura kept going with all these arm locks, which you are armbar, key lock. Um, then um, 
what was it? There, there was a great um, sell by Uemura when Suji had him in the Boston Crab. It was just freaking great the way he crawled to the ropes. And then there was a crazy arm drag and arm bar coming off of a Boston Crab by Uemura. Then he did that great double arm overhead suplex, which he used for the pin. But what was so cool about it was he had to fight for it. Like, the thing with this match is, is that these guys had to fight for every move that they did because it was like a struggle. Like the other guy, you know, it wasn't guys doing moves, you know, with each other. It was guys fighting for every single move. And then finally, you know, guy hit his finish, which was Uemura. Uh, but the way he got out of the Boston Crab, I mean, they work similarly in a lot of these matches. I mean, they do a lot of Boston Crabs and everything like that anyway. But his sell job and his rope escape on that Boston Crab was so good. So um, on a lot of cards, um, this would be the best match on, on the card. And um, But no, it was not in the league of the other matches on this card. Um, but it was freaking good. So Jeff Cobb and Ishii was the opening match, and this was the best Jeff Cobb match I ever saw. He was on fire in this match, and Ishii is always unbelievable. It was mostly Cobb hitting power moves, Ishii just pounding on the guy. Cobb did this incredible capture suplex, delayed uh, overhead belly to belly. So finally... Is that the one that he launched him? Yes. Yeah, I mean, he threw him... Yeah, that was like a Drew McIntyre suplex. He just launched him. So she keeps going for the tour of the islands, tour of the islands. Finally, he hits it, and as she just sits right up, and they start trading these strikes and headbutts. And finally, Cobb hits a pop-up power bomb, yanked him right up, hit this jumping, spinning tour of the islands, and pinned as she. This match was awesome, so good. Um, the one thing is Jeff Cobb's explosiveness in this match, and this actually had to go was was kind of a theme for the entire night is the explosiveness of everyone that you just don't see, you know, you really don't see it almost any anywhere else to this level. I mean, Jeff Cobb did this, and, you know, there were some sick headbutts on this show, and this was not one of them, but he did this explosive headbutt to the jaw out of nowhere. And, I mean, I'm sure, I don't know, I don't know, it, 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 didn't, look, it didn't look like it wasn't safe to me, you know, um, but it looked so good. And I mean, the other thing is, is I actually talked to Jeff Cobb about this once um, when he'd wrestled Ishii before. And um, it was after the first time he ever wrestled Ishii. OK, and and I was asking how it was. And he just says, you don't feel a thing. And it's like, you kidding me? It's like, no, I've heard many people say that. Ishii, doesn't that make him like the greatest worker in the world? Because he, he, looks well, like he is the greatest up. worker. He's one of them. Well, by one of far. Them. One of them. I mean, Unfortunately, he, there were like eight of them on this show. <laughs> yeah, there were. But it looks like he's absolutely killing you. With, I mean, those chops can't be fun. But, but um, when he throws those 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 elbows, it looks like he's killing you. And man, yeah, yeah look, he's it's one of the best I've ever seen. Did Did you hear Milano on on the Will Ospreay match? And when he did that, Milano, we'll, we'll get to when we get to the Will Ospreay match. I'll, I'll bring it up. Go ahead. Jay White versus Yujiro. So Yujiro gets in the ring and they're just kind of playing around. And Jay's, Jay didn't even, it's like he's wearing his track suit. He's not even suiting up for this match. So he's expecting Yujiro to lay down and Yujiro lays down and Jay goes to cover him and he's stalling. He's stalling on a cover. And finally he covers him and Yujiro kicks out and Jay White is baffled and you and says, ah, just kidding he says i was joking i'm just joking just joking so he lays down again and jay goes for the cover and you kicks out again and now jay's furious and he said something gets rolled up for a near fall and he starts screaming at him you starts then, then, hitting then him with a, moves there was, there was a second near fall right after and then, yes, yeah then near fall after near fall there's a low blow behind the ref's back into a cradle and then finally, Ghetto takes the ref. Jay hits a low blow of his own, hits the Blade Runner, gets the pin. He's still furious afterwards. Ghetto's trying to calm him down, and he just leaves and storms off. For what it off, was, he this was very off, good. He stormed off without Ghetto. No, this is a story. This is a storyline, and I guess that they're they're doing something um, with him and Evil that they were teasing. You know, they're in different blocks, so they they didn't. But but it's it's. Um, it's an interesting thing that they're. I don't. I don't. I don't know where it all ends up, but it was. This is. This was part of it. So then, yes, we had Will Ospreay and Taichi 
which was, in fact, probably the greatest Tai Chi match I've ever seen. And Osprey, all of his big moves, space flying tiger drop. He lands on the outside, looks right in the camera, and goes, I am so talented. <laughs> Gets in the ring. There was a spot where he goes for the moonsault, he misses. He tries a standing moonsault, misses. He does a running shooting star press, hits it, then a twisting moonsault off the middle of the rope. Boom, 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 all in succession. Okay, so at that point, Milano Collection AT, who's the announcer, he just sits there calmly, and he says this in English. He goes, he is the greatest wrestler of all time. Wow. Yep, yep, yep. They had this hard striking battle. Tai Chi at the Rabbit Lariat hit a last ride. And finally, Osprey goes for his springboard stunner, and Tai Chi just super kicks him out of midair. It was awesome. Tai Chi avoids the Stormbreaker. Osprey comes right off the ropes, hits the uh, springboard stunner, then kills him with a hidden blade, hits the Stormbreaker, gets the pin. Another incredible match. Yeah, fantastic. And I figured, I figured when the Cobb match was over, I'm thinking like, you guys, the rest of you guys are fucked. Because there ain't no way that you're going to be able to match this match. And everyone did. Everyone like, did. Everyone did. Like, nobody didn't match that match. Minoru Suzuki, Kota Bushi. First half of this match, they're doing like a... They're doing worked MMA. They're doing their kickboxing. There's the takedown, mount, guard. And finally, Kota boots him off the apron into the barricade. And now Suzuki is angry. And he gets on the ramp and he says, Come on! So Kota goes out on the ramp, and they have this giant brawl. Get back in the ring. Kota makes a big comeback. Zuki is just taking one hard kick after another, but he keeps doing the Undertaker sit-up, refusing to die. Finally, they just go at it, and Suzuki drops him with one forearm. Bushi sells it like he's dead. They had a couple of clunking headbutts, which were absolutely not needed in this match. God, no. They, they, were, they, were, they, they were... They were... Um, I mean... There was, was one... There was a particularly loud clunk. Oh, I know. Not good. No. Slapped the hell out of each other. And finally, Ibushi counters the gotch pile driver. Suzuki counters the Kamigoye. Ibushi escapes that. Hits a standing Kamigoye. Suzuki just does the timber fall. And then Ibushi hits the kneeling Kamigoye for the pin. This match was fantastic. Absolutely. One of the... I, I, this actually was my favorite match of all of them on this show. It was most people's favorite match. Um, but this match, when, 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 if we have to put like a space capsule of Minoru Suzuki, this is the one. I'm not saying this is the best Minoru Suzuki match I've seen, but it was the most Minoru Suzuki match I've ever seen. I mean, like, and I thought it was one of the best Minoru Suzuki match I've ever seen. It was, put it this way. He's had all these matches this year that we've raved about. Eugene Nagata. You got John all Moxley. of the best thing that he does in one single match. Yeah, um, 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 the, the Will Osprey match was fantastic. The um, you know, uh, you know, he's had a couple on this on this tour, but like the the, the you know the two there actually there was two new Eugene Nagatas. Okay, so anyway, Will Osprey is now the greatest. This is the you know even with the pandemic and everything being fucked up, this is without a doubt, without a doubt. The greatest 52-year-old wrestler year I have ever seen. Um, you could say Bachwinkle, you could say Tenru, I don't care who you say, Grand Hamada, whatever. Nothing like this. And I think this was one of the best Minoru Suzuki matches ever. But like I said, it was if if there was a, a match like like Minoru Suzuki's probably most famous great match was the 2012 match with Tanahashi, and and but this was. You know, that's okay. I, I'm granted Kota Bushi's fantastic, as is Tanahashi. But the Tanahashi, um, Minoru Suzuki match, there's still something about Tanahashi, especially like eight years ago when Tanahashi's like totally in his prime. Um, and, you know, just he has a certain thing about him. But this was, as a performance by Minoru Suzuki, was better than his performance in that match even even if you you would argue and that was like a match of the year and it's this was better than his aj match that one match of the year um this is just you know i think one of the things is is that this really didn't look like a pro wrestling match at all because the beginning you're just it was it was essentially like i'm watching the beginning and going like these guys are trying to do tamara kosaka which is i mean which is pro wrestling but it's like rings pro wrestling you know it's the legit looking stuff 
um, and and Tamara and Kasaka is like the the holy grail match of that style, and um, and and it's like man, these guys are are, are pretty much doing Tamara Kasaka. Then they come out there, and I mean, I, I guess that was kind of like the idea when all was said and done. You did some pro wrestling stuff, obviously, like Tamara and Kasaka aren't, aren't running under the ramp and just throwing haymakers at each other, nor are they doing clunking headbutts. But um, you know, or or the the deal where you're um, you know coming off into a j- jumping knee, but what a yeah, I mean. I, I I cannot recommend this card enough to anyone. This is one of the you know, I mean this is the card of the year without a doubt from start to finish, and and you you get it like you can watch a thing in probably two hours and fifteen minutes because they you know if you if you just go through the intermission, um, it's just incredible and um. And every match different, too. I mean, that's the other thing. Well, we still have a main event here, Dave. Okada and Shingo is the main event. And this match was also great. This was a Okada match from before the pandemic. And the most noteworthy Japanese story of 2020 is Okada finally beat someone with this Cobra Clutch. Oh, what a job. Finally got a submission. What a job Shingo did with that with that finish. So he Mm. keeps going for this this thing throughout the entire match. The money the money clip. And the key is they're doing like a really great match and the fans are super into it and they're clapping and they're popping for all the big moves and there's a rainmaker and a pumping bomber. They're going crazy for all this. But every now and then he'll clamp on that cab that cobra clutch and the crowd just dies because nobody buys it. And then he'll clamp it on later and they'll go down again. And they'll go back to wrestling, and so finally at the end, Okada hits this big lariat, and he's holding onto the wrist, and you're expecting that he's going to do that big Rainmaker, because everybody wants to Rainmaker. But instead, he stands up, and instead of using the wrist for the Rainmaker, he spins him around to that Cobra Clutch. And Shingo's down, and the crowd kind of goes down a little bit, but Shingo starts they to fight to his nuts. feet. They were going nuts. Are you kidding me? Well, the they, they started going crazy when Shingo gets up. And Okada, he's he's trying to fight him, but and Shingo's trying to get to the ropes, and still nobody's buying that this could be a finish, but they are clapping along. And finally, Okada, he's got him in this this money clip, and he does the Orton over the back backbreaker deal without letting go. So he gives him the backbreaker, and then he clamps it on even tighter, and Shingo's eyes are wide, and they're looking around everywhere, and all of a sudden the audience figures out, holy shit, this guy's in rough shape right here. And Shingo and he's and Okada gives it a good tug, and o- and Shingo's head kind of dips. All of a sudden, the ref he rings the bell, and the place goes absolutely crazy. And now the hold is over, yeah. and it took months, but he finally did it. This match was great. I can't believe he got this hold over at the end. Shingo was the perfect guy to go out for this because he just sold it so great. With the bug eyes and the fighting, but then it gets cinched in better. This was so good. And now Kata's got a new finisher. Yeah. But, I mean, not just that, but everything that they did in this match, all of Shingo's offense and Okada's offense looked incredible. And it was done, like, they did their shit, like, you know, like, like, you know, Okada's probably one of the best I've ever seen at, it's like, there are guys who can do drop kicks as good as Okada. Not a lot, but there are guys. But I have never seen a guy who times when they do the drop kick and makes it look like it's coming out of nowhere almost every time. Even though you should see it coming, it's just like he's got this knack of, I guess it's just explosiveness of, of, of the way he does it. But even when he did that drop kick in the corner, you know, where, where Shingo's on the middle ropes, he does this in, in 80% of his matches. And it's just a normal Okada spot. And just, I don't know what it was. I don't know if he was just feeling good, but he looked like he got higher than usual. And it's Shingo, who's just an incredible worker. But it was just like, this routine move just looked incredible. And I mean, I could I would say that about almost everything they did. Those guys' clotheslines on each other were so good. Um, you know, again, Shingo's so incredible. And this was... You know, this was the Okada that we have not seen in months, and we absolutely saw him, and um, and then some. I mean, this was just. Uh, I mean, the this match and the and the Ibushi match were so great, 
And I thought they were screwed after that freaking Jeff Cobb match. I, I thought, like, you guys, I mean, it's like freaking Will Ospreay has got to work with Taichi. Not that, and, and granted, Taichi's had a great tournament. Um, but still, it's still, you know, I mean, there's still, uh, and he's, he's got really good kicks and everything like that. And they, I, I will say this with Will Ospreay, they did some, Really good cross up stuff like when Will Ospreay does that drop kick in Zagiri's combo. He does the drop kick, lands on his feet. He's about to do the in Zagiri and, um, Tai Chi just like beats him to the, the punch with the Gamagiri kick. I mean, stuff like that was so good. Like if you, this was one of those things where if you've watched the whole tournament, um, and I would say this was with for the Okada match, the Osprey match, uh, to a degree, the Suzuki match. And, and certainly the Cobb match, the other matches in the tournament all build up to this. I don't know where they go from here because it's like, you just can't do a better show than this. And also it's Osaka and Osaka. God bless those fans. It's like they can't cheer and they can't boo. And every match had super heat with no cheering and booing because these people were just stomping on their feet and clapping and they were up, you know, the whole night. I mean, it's grand. It's a short show and and everything but they were up for the young lions and they were up for everything i mean this is a this can't miss show it's fantastic